members of the same family often look alike. Even if you'd never met Ben or Matthew, who's a bit younger, you'd probably guess that they're brothers. But there's one important difference between the two boys. Although both look perfectly healthy, Ben has a disease that may kill him. It's called cystic fibrosis. A lad comes up to me and he says, is it true that you're going to die when I'm 18? And I, well, and I said, well, well, no, not really, because kind of, you go out tonight and have like a brain tumour <laughs> getting over it all, couldn't you? And like, what's the point? I could live till I'm 60 and they could live till the 30. So I, I just get on with my life and, and when, it's, when your number's up, your number's up, isn't it? Stephanie also has cystic fibrosis, or CF for short. CF makes sticky fluid collect in her lungs and chest. This mucus can lead to coughs and infections. Physiotherapy clears the fluid and prevents lethal lung damage. Clapping and squeezing dislodge most of the mucus and a special coughing technique helps to get rid of it. <laughs> Other people don't always appreciate the problems. My friends at school all understand that I've got CF and where I've got CF and what I have to do about it. And if anybody say, say that I've picked on me and starts calling my names, because I've got quite a lot of friends in the school, they'll all go up to that person and say, look, if you can't help having CF, stop saying horrible things to her. But after a while, if they get to know me, to find out that I'm not just some person who takes sort of pills and they understand about CF once they get to know me. Meal times are also affected by cystic fibrosis because it weakens the body's digestive system. What might these pills contain to help Ben digest his food? This is Ben's medicine for just one day. Taking all this lot sometimes attracts unwanted attention at school. They worry to me I'm back and saying druggy and that, but like, I, I won't bother about it, kind of thing. It's like, if I don't take them, I'd end up in a box kind of thing. So like, what's the point? I'll well just get on with me, like, forget about them, and think, do what I need to do. Every day, Ben has to spend an hour using a special inhaler, which sprays a fine mist of medicine just where it's needed. But he organises his life so that he still has time for all the other things he wants to do. I just enjoy all sports, like, because it, what, it can't stop you, CF can't stop you. So I just get on with it and do all sports. You can't catch cystic fibrosis the way you catch a cold, so how do you get it? Ben and Stephanie inherited CF from their parents, just as they inherited the colour of their eyes and the shape of their faces. In fact, all living things inherit characteristics from their parents. Plants, as well as animals, pass on characteristics to their offspring. Scientists at this plant breeding center hope to produce a new strain of barley which combines the best qualities of two parent plants. This scientist wants plant number 17 to be one parent and plant number 26 to be the other. How do you think she'll make sure that her two chosen plants are the parents? These anthers are packed with Plant 17's own pollen. Why do they have to be removed? Plant 17 is now ready to receive pollen, but Plant 26's pollen isn't mature yet. Why is she protecting Plant 17?
From all around the world, strange and exotic seeds arrive at this center. They can be bred with European plants. Most plants have some desirable and some undesirable qualities. This one's got plenty of grain, but scores too high on the droopometer. In the developing world, farmers need to produce more grain. This plant has a high yield of grain and would be excellent for producing food. Unfortunately, it's just too tall. It would have no chance in a high wind. So the best thing to do is to cross it with a short plant, like this one from Japan. To produce a high yield plant that's just tall enough and no more. Perfect. A few days later, and at last, plant 26 is ready to be introduced to plant 17. Which parts of plant 26 would you use? How would you make sure that the pollen gets to plant 17? She's exposed the anthers to let the pollen out. Each grain of pollen now has a good chance to fertilize one of plant 17's egg cells. Each time this happens, a seed will be produced. All these people came from fertilized eggs. They're all different, but you can pick out some similarities. Can you spot the happy families around this table? Have you got up uh, Mr. Pan then? No one is identical to either mum or dad. Everyone has characteristics from both. But how do eyes know what color to be? And how come a nose knows what shape to take? What's passed on from our parents that tells us how to grow? Miss Heal. Squeeze into the plant this afternoon. What exactly did Ben's parents pass on that caused him to develop cystic fibrosis? How might the future be different for people like Ben and Stephanie? if we understood how eyes, noses and diseases were inherited. From your eyelashes to your toenails, your body is made of cells. So even saliva holds the secret of inheritance. To unlock the secret, we journey to the centre of the cell. Austrian scientist Walter Fleming brought a splash of color to the study of cells. He couldn't make out enough detail in the cell's nucleus. So he sloshed in a drop of dye, which showed up stringy things inside. Now he could count them and watch how they behaved. Because they absorbed the color, he called them chromosomes. It's your parents' chromosomes that you inherit. Chromosomes are like instruction manuals. They tell you how to grow. Human beings have 46 chromosomes. You inherit 23 from your mother, and to get a full set, you also inherit 23 from your father. Imagine your chromosomes are like books in your own personal library. You inherited the top shelf from mum and the bottom shelf from dad. There is an identical library in every single cell in your body. Each book contains information on how you grow. Chromosomes tell our bodies how to make skin, bones, blood, hair and everything else. Most of the chromosomes Ben inherited from his parents were fine. That's why he looks perfectly healthy. But there was a problem with chromosome number seven, 
and a faulty instruction caused Ben to develop cystic fibrosis. What happens if one of the pages of an instruction manual is damaged? Normally, there is an alternative manual, which you inherited from your other parent. But what if the alternative manual is also damaged? Unfortunately, that's what happened in Ben's case. Here are his parents' number seven chromosomes. Mum's on the left and Dad's on the right. Ben inherited one from each parent. If he had inherited just one of these good chromosomes, he would have been healthy. He got two faulty number seven chromosomes and so developed cystic fibrosis. How could Ben's parents pass on CF even though they themselves don't have the disease? By breaking down the cells in a saliva sample, Scientists can read the books in your personal library. Chromosomes don't really have pages like a book. Instead, they are made of genes, the instructions for building your body. A gene is a long stretch of a beautiful molecule called deoxyribonucleic acid. Just as well, it's called DNA for short. Why not try making DNA at home? Take one onion and some ordinary household ingredients. Get a grown-up with a sharp knife to chop the onion. Add detergent, salt and water. Mix well and simmer gently for 15 minutes at 70 degrees Celsius. Cool the mixture and to release the flavour of the DNA, let's really chop up those onion cells. Get rid of nasty solids with a coffee filter and you're left with proteins and DNA. Not far to go now. Add a dash of enzymes and say goodbye to the proteins. Then tempt out the DNA with some nice cold alcohol. and leave to mature for a while. Here's one we prepared earlier. Amaze your friends as white strands of DNA appear before their very eyes. To take a closer look at DNA, real scientists stick it in jelly for a special kind of chromatography. This hospital scientist is taking a tip from Walter Fleming and staining the DNA with dye. She injects samples of DNA at one end of the jelly. Each of these samples is from a different person. When she switches on a high voltage, all the DNA moves along the jelly, but the various chunks travel at different speeds. Smaller chunks go faster. Under ultraviolet light, she can identify each separate chunk of DNA. One of these is the single gene that causes CF. Why is being able to pick out this gene useful for doctors and scientists? Identifying the cystic fibrosis gene has already been useful. Doctors can now diagnose the disease in tiny babies and give them early treatment, which will limit damage to their lungs. If doctors could replace faulty genes, they might even be able to cure people with inherited diseases. These are bacteria. 
Scientists are using them to change the way plants grow. Bacteria may be microscopic, but they also have a gene library which tells them how to develop. This scientist intends to replace one of the plant's genes with a gene from the bacteria. Just like the scientist at the hospital, she can prepare a sample of the bacteria's DNA. She removes one chunk of DNA, a single bacterial gene. The chunk is used to make a pure solution of the gene, but you'll never guess how they get this gene into the plant. With a gun! This is the target, a plate of cress. She puts a dollop of gene solution on a plastic bullet. and finally inserts the cartridge. The gene solution will be traveling at 300 meters per second when it hits the cress. <laughs> to test the process, they blasted a plant with a gene carrying the instruction, Grow Blue. What more useful properties could be given to plants in this way? And might it be possible to replace a gene in a human being? Now then, Ben, you've had an x-ray done this morning, haven't you? Yep. Let's have a to cure look. cystic fibrosis, doctors would have to replace the faulty gene in the critical cells in the lungs. This technique is being developed, and it's called gene therapy. Like they're doing that much with gene therapy and all that, so, like, if I keep it up now, taking all tablets, keeping clean, have a uh, chest and all that, like, I'll probably be a normal child by the time I'm 18, 20. So that'll be good, that. Now then, Ben, can we just run through the, the medication? Doctors can now find out whether a baby will develop cystic fibrosis even before it's born. Yes. Uh, take that two, you know, each If you were a parent, would you want to have this information? And what would you do with it? Genetic science is changing the world we live in. Is it a change for the better?